Hello and welcome back to KT280 Tutorials. I am your tutor Arnav and today we are going to start with Acoustics of Hall and Conditions for Good Acoustics. This is also known as Architectural Acoustics. These are some of the points to be considered in order to design a hall. There are two kinds of sounds which will be heard by the listeners. One is the sound which comes directly from the source and the other sound is reflected from the surface of the walls. Then when you have a concerts, you may have different musical instruments playing at different frequencies and they may interfere. Then we also need to consider reverberation and what is the ideal reverberation time for different applications. And lastly, we also need to make sure that the sound energy is distributed throughout the hall evenly. The, uh, so there should not be concentration of sound at one particular point. These are acoustic requirements for a good auditorium. We have discussed most of these points in our previous slides, but let's go through it again. First of all, the source of sound should be of adequate intensity so that it can be heard clearly by everyone in the auditorium. Then this sound should spread evenly throughout the auditorium. And then the notes produced by the source should be clear and distortion free. Then the undesired noise like um, maybe there is a fan in the auditorium. So it may produce some stray noise and this may interfere with the sound produced by the source and lead to uh, undesired output. Then the sound distribution due to shape and size of an object present in the auditorium must be reduced. For example, you have chairs, stairs and other arrangements in the auditorium and these objects may reflect sound uh, from the source in different directions and may cause undesirable interference effect. Then reverberation time should be managed in such a way that it will match the preferred values. These are some methods of design of an auditorium. We'll look at these points one by one. The first point to consider is selection of site. If your site is located near a noisy location, then noise from the surroundings may cause disturbance inside the hall. Next thing to consider is the volume of the auditorium. Small size auditorium will result in uneven distribution of sound, whereas large sized auditorium will result in weaker intensity of sound and larger reverberation. So the volume of the auditorium should be optimum. In Sabine's formula, you have seen that the reverberation time is directly proportional to the volume of the auditorium. Hence, large sized auditorium will have larger reverberation time. Now let us see how shape affects the acoustics of auditorium. Now in parallel walls, the problem is the sound waves may get reflected again and again and they will interfere with themselves causing stationary waves. And these stationary waves may disturb uh, the auditorium. The production of stationary waves need to be avoided. In order to do that, we use splayed walls. So we are just giving a certain angle to the walls so that it is reflected by a different angle. So it won't interfere with itself uh, or superpose with itself to form a, a stationary wave. Next thing to avoid is curved surfaces. As you can see here, majority of the sound waves are concentrated only at this particular point. So we have unequal distribution of sound energy and this needs to be avoided. In order to avoid unnecessary sounds, we use absorbance. These are some of the materials which can be used as absorbance and their respective absorption coefficients are listed here. Sometimes even false ceiling is used for better absorption. 
then we need to maintain the reverberation time as per prescribed norms more the reverberation time you will have richer musical sound and less the reverberation time you will have clearer speech so for lecture halls you need clearer speech more than the richer sound because you need to understand the words spoken by the speaker in the lecture hall so you need lesser reverberation for clearer speech whereas for concert halls you need a good musical sound so there reverberation time preferred is comparatively more than the lecture halls which is 1.2 seconds and for cinema halls reverberation time of 2 seconds is preferred now in order to achieve the optimum reverberation time we use proper absorbing materials which we have seen in the previous slide this is very interesting phenomena these sound waves are coming directly from the source now since the source is far away these are almost parallel and as you can see initially these sound waves will reach your ear at the same time however when they are reflected from surfaces like these as you can see the reflection from this point will reach your ear first as the distance traveled by this sound wave is less however the same sound will be heard by you at a later interval of time because of this reflection and then the same sound will be heard by you due to this reflection this is because all these reflected rays will travel different distances same sound will reach your ear at different intervals of time this results in an additional musical note being formed so this phenomena is called as eclon effect so the definition is production of a new musical sound of a definite frequency due to reflection from a regular structures like stairs or railings now this occur due to successive echoes and we need to avoid such surfaces of course you cannot avoid stairs or railings so in order to avoid echelon effect you need to use carpets or other absorbers so that the reflections are minimized so that's all for architectural acoustics see you next time